Joining me now, Arthur's Bruce Malday and Jim Donahue, who are co-authors of an upcoming book entitled Why the Hall Not? and the amazing journey to Cooperstown. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having uh, us. The, um, the origin of this idea it go, goes back so many years. It, it sounds like something that should be made into a movie already, and the book is just now coming out. Tell us, tell us your story and how you met Richie and what happened uh, that brings us to this day and this writing. Well, where I was, Beasley, I was uh, eight years old. For my eighth birthday, my dad got me tickets uh, to the Phil's game. Uh, first autograph I ever got, I had an autograph book from Woolworths. We went down to the dugout. By the dugout, got an autograph from Richie Ashburn. Lasted all of maybe 45 seconds. Uh, that was it. Said thank you. I believe I said thank you. Hopefully I said thank you. And uh, that was it. 33 years later, Richie was in a position where he was off the Hall of Fame ballot due to a a rule change that happened in Cooperstown, which to this day I really never understood it 100%. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met him at a card show, and uh, I basically said to him, how would you feel if your fans started a grassroots campaign to try to overturn this rule and get you back on the Hall of Fame ballot? Wow. That's where we were. So, um, first of all, for all you athletes out there, you need to be real nice to young oh, people. absolutely. <laughs> look, look at what happened here. This man starts... A campaign, and this turned out to be a really big deal, this campaign for Richie. Yeah, I would say so. It uh, garnered about 180,000 signatures nationwide uh, from Europe. From, uh, I had a merchant marine ship on the way to Japan that actually guys heard about it, signed, and sent back petitions. Major athletes, I mean, uh, uh, usually I never got you on there, unfortunately. <laughs> but, but I did have Lenny and, and uh, Dr. J and Charles and... Uh, uh, all the Phil, Mike Schmidt, a lot of Hall of Famers uh, on there, and guys did sign. They they realized that Richie was a Hall of Fame caliber player. And the one thing I always wanted to make perfectly clear was my campaign was never to get Richie Ashburn in the Hall of Fame. He was a Hall of Famer from the beginning, from his credentials, his statistics. He was a Hall of Famer. My campaign was to overturn a rule to make him eligible for the Hall of Fame again, and that's where it really came into play. That rule had to be overturned mm -hmm. so he could become eligible again, and eventually be elected, enjoy the last two years of his life as a Hall of Famer. Now, before we get to that induction and, and the final moments of, of this tremendous story, how do you two come together, and, and what, makes you, what made you say, wow, let's put this down? Well, just by happenstance, actually, Beasley, um, about this time last year, I had tickets to a Phillies game, Boston Red Sox, and Jim happened to be the game day employee there, and we started a conversation. And it, obviously, Jim is just so enthusiastic about baseball. And uh, he asked at one point what I did, and I said I write books, and I just finished a book, true crime book. And Jim said, I have a book. So I said, tell me about it. And he just told you this story, which I think is a great story. I agree with you. It should be a movie. And I said, let's write it. And that's how it all started. Just Jim was assigned to the section where I had tickets to see the Boston Red Sox. That's yeah, how it started. You see the magic that happens in sports? Now, I see you, uh, obviously, you are a lifetime, lifelong lover uh, of, of your Phillies. And uh, when you watched him as you grew up, and then, then he becomes a great broadcaster and you listen to his voice, what are some of the memories? I mean, it's got to be a warm feeling knowing that you know this man and, and uh, just the influence that he had, that, that brief meeting. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Richie and I became friends after I started the campaign. The one thing Richie said that when I started the campaign, the first day I met him and mentioned that to him, he obviously couldn't get involved directly. I mean, it would be self-serving, and he didn't want to do that. I didn't want him to have to come to that position. I wanted it to be a grassroots campaign, and my campaign couldn't have been any simpler. I had no money. No resources, no advertising, no anything. I mimeographed and, and Xeroxed petitions, and I had bumper stickers made up that said, Richie Ashburn, why the hell not? We sold the bumper stickers, and the profits went to ALS, the Phillies charity in Richie's name. It wasn't, I mean, it was as low budget as low budget could be. Mm. And uh, I only, uh, the entire time I only had one ad, and that was a free ad that I got in Phillies report. But other than that, uh, the one thing I, I gained from this whole thing was a friendship with Richie. And yeah. I, I tell people, and we have, actually have it in the book, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm not divulging too much. I, I say the greatest thrill of my life was to be able to call Richie my friend, and mm -hmm. my greatest honor was to have Richie call me his friend. Wow. See the power of...
friendship and the power of one man who decides that this is not right. It's just a, a wonderful story. All right, let's get to, oh, he's in the Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. you, how do you find out that he's been elected and, and were you there and, and tell us about that? The day that it actually happened was March 7th, 1995. I was driving home from a funeral of all places hmm. and uh, we listened to the radio and uh, they announced that Richie Ashburn was in the Hall of Fame. So wow. it went from the yin and yang from uh, a yeah. down type of day to a total up type of day. and. Uh, it was unbelievable. It was a culmination of four years of my work. I started it in 1991, getting petitions. I was set up at Veterans Stadium. I was basically talking to anyone and any person, any group that would listen to what I wanted to do and was trying to do. But it wasn't, I was the kid walking by the oil refinery with a lit match and the thing exploded. It was always wow. waiting to explode. Mm. It just needed somebody to drop the match. So that's the only credit I take. Richie was a Hall of Famer. It wasn't a brilliant idea. I, I like to say I was the smartest guy in my block, but that's not the case. <laughs> it's not the case. It was just something that was meant to wow. happen. I was lucky enough to get involved and uh, forge a friendship with Richie. By the book, read the story. You can tell it's just a fantastic uh, story and all Phillies fans and sports fans in general. Just a, a, a fan making a, a wrong right and doing the right thing. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank Good you. luck and hope to see a movie one day. Uh,